of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burning. This week's program is about fitness and autism. And before we begin, we'd like to ask Will, what's with your shirt? I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you asked. This week, sh this, week is, uh, this week's shirt is my new Best Buddy shirt. I got it from the last Best Buddies speed friending event. This this shirt not only represents best buddies, but it represents the it represents at fitness and and at athleticism and and participation in in athletic events, not just with best buddies, but with USF. Very interesting. And you've been involved with best buddies for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, a long time. I'm I'm a regular member. I I, I've been, been best buddies for, for years. I've even emceed their friendship walk. Excellent. Good to hear. Thank you, Will. Uh, today, our program will be in three segments. Our first segment was previously uh, taped, and we'll be with uh, Sloan and Steve Cook. Uh, Sloan is a very active member of the community and an avid runner. Hope you enjoy it. I'm here to interview Sloan Cook for our segment. Tell us about your running in high schools. Um, my running in high school was really uh, good, and I and it re and it reduced my anxiety when I was uh, when I was uh, when I was on autism, having I'm on, on, on having the spectrum, and it reduces that, and it's really and it's really. It makes me feel a lot better and and uh, and able to and able to focus more on what I'm doing. How often do you work out? I work out every day. Tell us about your tell us about your races. My races were very fun and uh, and also. I competed at Dolphin South End Running Club, and it's really fun, and uh, and I like, and I also do do cro do cross country with uh, the Excelsior. It's so fun, and I and the, and I and I love uh, competing with fast uh, people too. Steve, can you tell us about Sloan's races? Sure. Um... Sloan had some moderate success in uh, high school and college cross country. He participated in the state championship in high school two years in a row and followed that up uh, the next two years at the community uh, college championships of California and uh, did quite well. In the uh, community college, he was in the top third of the finishers in cross country. At Steve. Can you tell us about Sloan's successes in, in road races? I'd be happy to, but first um, I, I want to make a comment that uh, Sloan competed at the uh, city championships in track uh, and got a third place finish in the two mile run. And then he, uh, after that, he participated in cross country in uh, at City College where he participated in the uh, the Golden Gate Invitational, as well as uh, the the uh, regional and uh, conference championships for City College in cross country. Tell us about tell us about Sloan's road races. Okay, Sloan has done pretty well in road races since college. He's uh, got won sixty four races at the Dolphin South End, for the Dolphin South End. And he has uh, well over 200 top five finishes in road races uh, for the Dolphin South End. Uh, the Dolphin South End runners have been uh, putting on races since 1964. And Sloan's been participating since 2007 to up to the present day. Can running benefit others in, on the autism spectrum? Yes, it can benefit others on the autistic spectrum because it it, re, it reduces uh, anxiety and uh, and it helps physical health and mental health. Thank, 
Thanks for being with us today, Sloan. We hope to see you on to have you on the on the show again soon. And keep running. Okay. And keep running. In our next segment, we will be talking with Hero and Steve Medina. Now, Steve, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, sure. Hero. Uh, so uh, we moved to the San Francisco area uh, probably about six years ago, and um, we've always tried to uh, uh, keep Hero involved in a lot of different um, sports activities. Um, his mom would, would take him out running and doing different activities, but we have always been looking for uh, kind of organized activities or group activities that he could participate in uh, besides doing sports with his, his brother um, on the weekends. So... Um, when we came up to San Francisco, there was a, we actually found that there's a, a wide variety of organized activities um, that uh, Hero can probably talk about. Hero's 20 years old. Um, he's currently attending CCSF, um, and he does that um, with a, an assistant. And um, has also taken some, uh, some classes there for a physical um, activity as well, like uh, soccer and taekwondo and things like that, too. So, yeah. Excellent. You take it from there, Will. Gladly. Tell us about your fitness routine. How often do you exercise? What physical activity are you involved in? <clears throat> I occasionally play tennis on weekends. I take most Special Olympics sports like soccer right now there's also tennis there's track and field bowling floor hockey and basketball i also take jazz dances on thursday do you compete do you compete in, in in any sports events on a regular basis special olympics tournaments well I have a bunch of medals, including gold medals. What is your What is your advice to others in the autism community about keeping in shape? Um, I think uh, I'll I'll take that one. Um, so as I said before, uh, we found actually a, a wealth of uh, of resources up in the uh, Bay Area regarding uh, activities uh, in different kinds of sports. I think one of the biggest ones that we were quite surprised with was uh, Special Olympics um, and Special Olympics of Northern California to be specific. I mean, you could get more information at their website. It's uh, SONC, S -O Special Olympics Northern California, SONC.org. And um, Hero's basically just been going from sport to sport to sport. So he has year round mm -hmm. um, activities that he's involved in. So uh, as he said right now, there's soccer, um, then there's floor hockey, then there, there's basketball. Um, he goes to tennis and golf um, out in Marin just because they, the timing works a little bit better for us. So there's a ton of activities. Um, the, there's plenty of helpers out there thanks to uh, uh, organizations like um, uh, uh, Hands On, um, which, which sends a lot of volunteers or has a lot of volunteers coming um, for these. And... Um, it's just a really great opportunity I mean, just to, to uh, work with the practices, um, get on a team and, and play. And if, even if they don't win, it's just a great experience. They get to go to a tournament, um, you know, and when they see a lot of other people play. And really, it's, it's just a really nice cycle throughout the year to be able to um, be involved in one sport or another. Very good. Hero. You're involved in many different sports. How did you decide which ones you like and which ones you didn't like? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure. It depends on skill and also safety. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't play football because it's... because it leads to long-term injuries. Yeah, right now I don't think they have a football in Special Olympics, mm -hmm. at least not in Northern California, but they do. The, the soccer and um, the uh, uh, floor hockey is probably one of the more uh, toughest, um, mm -hmm. I, we have always, we say, aggressive um, mm -hmm. uh, sports, but they do wear uh, helmets and, and they do wear shin guards and everything like that. 
but it still gets pretty uh, pretty rough. It's a it's a very people get very excited about uh, uh, <laughs> getting together and, and winning in, in those tournaments. But um, all in all, it everybody everybody knows it's all about fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so even if they don't win, um, I think everybody I, I know everybody has a great time. What do you get out of being as physically active as you are and being involved in so many sports? I'm not really sure. I think I get some accomplishment. Maybe it's something to do. And also physical activity. Yeah, so one of the things, of course, is they they do get um, awards at the tournaments, um, and and luckily they uh, they've actually won um, uh, a couple of their divisions. So he does have a, a bunch of gold medals. They get something, even even the people that don't win um, their divisions, they still get ribbons and they still get a lot of recognition. So. Uh, there's there's kind of the there's that uh, accomplishment after the season you practice and then um, you uh, you know kind of go to the tournament and then that's over and then it's kind of on to the next thing so uh, at least from what I've seen it, it's not only the uh, accomplishment of going through the, the season then to the tournament but it's also learning right because Passing is all was always a real big teamwork. Mm. Um, is something that I know all of the sports have worked on because it's one thing to just dribble the ball down the court and try to make a basket, or just you know take the ball down the, the field and kick a goal, versus you know looking at where your your teammates are and passing to them if they're in a better position to score. Right. So you saw a lot of a lot of uh, of. Progress, you know, with you and even other players about being able to pass uh, and and make some really good plays. I think probably everybody's a lot more hap- happier when they see some really good teamwork leading up to um, a scoring um, uh, goal or basket, um, rather than just one person doing all of the work. Very good. Uh, one final question here. Uh, do you have a favorite sport? Soccer, because I'm good at it, though I don't have single favorites of anything. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think the other, the other thing t- uh, about, uh, in general, what, what, what Hero likes is the fact that it is something that gets him out of the house, into, okay. the, into the fields, so to speak, and, you know, outdoors. Um, and... It's something to look forward to because it is season after season, tournament after tournament, and um, it's just a, a really nice routine um, for him to be in. So, you know, kind of a change of scenery because, of course, the practices are held in different places. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, tennis, um, uh, you know, we were driving out to Marin for that and, and golf as well. Um, and then, you know, Golden Gate Park for soccer and, and different auditoriums or, or uh for the basketball and, and floor hockey. So it's kind of change of scenery, gets him out of the house mm-hmm. and, of course, keeps him fit as well. And Excellent. in social situations, which I think is really important too, is just being out there and, and, and able to deal with other people um, cooperatively to compete in a team sport. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. In our third segment, uh, we'll be speaking with Andrew and Ron Bixler, who will be talking about their act activities and involvement in uh, weight training. Okay. So our, um, our workouts, uh, which are probably average twice a week, uh, consist of three parts. We do initially some aerobic exercise on elliptical machines or transporters, something of that nature, uh, stationary bicycle. Uh, we spend some time uh, doing stretching. And then the majority of, it we, of the time we spend doing weight training, which involves a, a circuit of activities to exercise all different parts of your body. Uh, the whole thing is about an hour and a half mm. routine. Um, we do this because all physical activity that's going to be completely beneficial has to have an element of endurance, of strength, and flexibility. And so that's why we do all three of those activities every time we train. Oh, don't and don't forget they, there's sometimes, well, even 
even the non, there's even non weight equipment, you know, when you do like your chin pulls or your sit ups without the weight or some, or some things like that. Yes, that's true. Do you compete? Do you compete in any sports events on a regular basis? Well, we've uh, worked out, and Andrew has uh, and I have been weight training together for now more than twenty-one years. We started out initially with uh, his adaptive PE teacher, who uh, for a long time not only taught adaptive PE classes that Andrew and other uh, students went to. Uh, but also was a teacher at the College of Marin in their physical education department, had a long personal background in sports and fitness. And he started his own uh, business as a personal trainer in Marin, and when he did that, it coincided with Andrew turning 14, and so we started uh, the program under his instruction that we continue on today. Uh, for about four years, from the time Andrew was 18 to 21, uh, we did power lifting. No, that's 17. Oh, excuse me, 17 to 21. We did power lifting. And, uh, well, and, but event, well, eventually it was the two of us, and then I sort of, then I sort of left, left you out. Yeah. Well, that's true. You probably did a little bit more of it than I did, although we, we did attend meets, uh, throughout Northern California and even in Reno at one point. Uh, that was, uh, I think, really interesting and good competitive activity. But, Andrew, you said that after a time, just the pressure of oh, that activity oh, yeah. seemed like um, a lot. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then, but then one day I figured, one day I figured, well, powerlifting had gone far enough. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, so... Yeah, so then we decided to just to just do the regular weight lifting lifting to you know uh yeah to make yeah make the best way. Mhm. Mm yeah, uh the weightlifting program we do for ourselves is just for that. It's just uh for strength and fitness and to continue being fit. Um the powerlifting, actually, for folks that don't know, is uh, constitutes uh, three different uh, uh, competitions. A deadlift competition, which Andrew was very good at. At one point, he could lift four hundred pounds. Okay. Uh, well, event. Well, all eventually that. Yeah, eventually. And, he, and don't forget about it. Don't forget about the parts of uh, the uh, bench press and the squats. That's right. Although squat is being done less because it, it has a potential to damage people's knees, so in some cases now it's just deadlift and bench press. Well, but, even but we did all even of those. so even so they were all there. Yes, you're right. Very good, Bill. What is your advice to others in the autism community about keeping in shape? Well, my advice to everybody, and not just in the autism community, but in some ways especially uh, people in the autism community, is to find activities that you enjoy and that work for you, that are physical activities, and then make an effort to practice them regularly. I understand that you are a runner, Will, that you do running. Is that right? That is correct. Yes, see? Uh, An I'm excellent ready. activity. I, I run four days a week. Yes, right, exactly. Some on, I even compete in races on some, on some Sundays. Exactly. Okay, so that's what I mean, that people can find the uh, activities, uh, physical activities that they enjoy and pursue those, and uh, it's not only satisfying to find an activity like that that you enjoy, but then the results of being healthy and fit make your whole life better. Mm-hmm. Andrew and Ron, what do you most enjoy about your routines? Oh, um, oh, well, well, you, well, one, I can give you one, one thing, because, you know, one thing I figure, figured out is, well, you, Dad, you know how, remember in Latpole how, yeah, how our old trainer advised 
and does to use the wide that wide bar. Mm-hmm. Well, I finally figured out not everyone, of course, can yeah, can grasp that not everyone can grasp that wide. There's why some of those handles are shorter or have special handles to help with and and stuff like that. Mhm. Mm well, so what, so my so one piece of advice is is find some is find something throughout each workout part that kind of fit it that kind of fits you the best way. Yeah, it's true that each uh, area that you're trying to uh, exercise, I mean, area, part of your body, I should say, you can do a variety of exercises. To, uh, and so probably uh, what could become sort of a mon monotonous routine could be made more interesting simply by changing the exercises, whether you're using free weights or machines or whatever. Um, I, at the risk... <laughs> I think that uh, that the results are certainly something that you we always enjoy, and, and like so many things, I think routine is wonderful for people because it does uh, keep them doing and keep them moving, and and uh, that generally people uh, need some sort of need routines and physical fitness is a part of your regular routine in life is a very good thing for your spirit. Well, very good. And then I think finally, uh, Ron, since uh, you and Andrew have been very active in the autistic community for many, many years as well as being physically active, are there any particular things that you think our community members might need to take into consideration? Mm -hmm. uh, Such as? as? Well, that's, that's my, for my us. Question that's for this you. question for us, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Okay. Um. Well. Let. Well, let's see. Um. Well, I could tell you one. Well, let me tell you. Um. You one thing. Um. Hey, say, Dad. Yes. Remember? Do you remember Camp Arroyo? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, there were. Well, they divided up different sports throughout Special Olympics. Some had power. Some had some had weightlifting, and some people did bowling, and and it said and and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, well, one ad, well one piece of advice is even throughout, even when it comes to Special Olympics, well. Is try to find out which particular event you're, yeah, you're connected with. Well, that's true. You had an opportunity, Andrew, to uh, accompany your trainer and be not, his assistant. Yeah, at, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about. No, at Camp Arroyo. I wanted to explain to folks what that was. That was this, uh, run by the Special Olympics, and as you said, it had a whole variety of. Uh, sports that uh, were taught there and people stayed there for uh, what was it a weekend or, or more uh, and trained and I think that that shows you that there are a variety of activities that that people can engage in uh, either at a Special Olympics level or in some cases in open competition I know that you and, and other people competed both in this Special Olympian category and in the regular uh, competitions uh, when it came to powerlifting. Uh, I guess to get back to your question, Keith, of, of what to be aware of, I think that it has to be something that's uh, reasonably accessible regularly to people, not something where you're going to hope, for example, that somebody can take you out far distance that you can't get to so that you can participate in cycling or something that's not maybe available to you close by. So it should be something that's fairly e easily obtainable. Um, obviously something that financially that is not too extreme. I mean, if your only interest is going to be downhill skiing, you're going to have to have a lot of money to pursue that. Uh, it's something that, in, in, that people innately enjoy, even though uh, athletic endeavors weren't something that were necessarily the the thing you you did best innate, innately, Andrew. 
we thought, you know, you need to not only learn certain basic things like swimming and bicycle riding and so forth as a young person, even if it meant working very long and hard, mm -hmm. which you did to master those sorts of physical activities, but also that um, you needed to uh, continue. And so that's why you attended sports classes and, and so you could just um, get introduced to the larger world of sports activities. And you're right, you, uh, you practice martial arts for some time both and, and you also uh, pursued other activities besides uh, weightlifting. But weightlifting is the thing that we can do together that's accessible for us that provides good benefit for the time involved and so invested. yes yes and so, so in we've our continued it yes yeah, so yes yeah, so in our case it's the main thing and now our cultural correspondent uh, Stacy Kennedy will give us an update of the events of the community that are upcoming thank you I would like to share today a really important um, conference that's happening next Saturday October 8th it's Ascend's ninth conference the title of it is neurodiversity leaders 2016 adult autism advances this will take place at seven hills conference center at san francisco state university from 9 a.m to 4 p.m october 8th and there are going to be some speakers one called sandra williams author of national speaker mother of four speaks founder and recipient of the ohio state Co governor's award for her remarkable journey from traumatic childhood autism to national autism leadership, Sandra provides insight in on living with high functioning autism and finding success in the world. Another another speaker will be Hacky Reitman, MD, founder of Different Brains, a book that he wrote, and um, Ways to Work. Mike Burnick, co-author of the Autism Job Club, moderates a panel highlighting different paths to employment, including Ultra Testing from New York, Eric Zimmerman, founder of the Buddy Project from Washington, D.C. area, Mike, excuse me, Brian Jacobs, Capital Emergence, Mark Jessen, a man on the spectrum in the ASP Autism at Work program. So the autism community uh, leaders all, is all about finding common ground. Ascend will moderate a convocation of national groups, Autism Global Initiative, the Autism Society of America, GRASP, Ascendigo, Autistic Women at Google, and more. And there'll be breakout sessions and resume database being formed. So anyhow, that is um, that is the cultural report I have for today. Okay. Thank you very much, Stacy. Sure. One of the things I can tell you about having attended this conference previously is like Ascend, it is a mixture of both the people who are on the spectrum and off the spectrum, as well as the presenters and panelists. Probably about a 50-50 mixture designed not to have so much people talking about the community, but the members of the community discussing it themselves. If anyone is interested in finding more information about this very interesting and enlivening and enlightening conference, please check out the Ascend website at www.aascend.org. Again, that's www.aascend.org. Thank you. Well, folks, uh, for this week, this has been another program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And I'm Ron Bixler. <laughs> I'm Stacy Kennedy. I want to thank all you viewers. Until next time, thank you very much and have a great week. Bye-bye.